What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Dead Funny Review Show. I'm your host, Chris. Showing me today are my co-hosts, Kelsey, Cody, and Bree Bree. And today, we're here to talk about some Stranger Things Season 3. We said we would, and now we're here to do it. I don't think Bree was part of the first discussion. No, it was just the three of us. Yep, you weren't there for the first one. So here we are. We've all sat down. We've all watched the season. Before we dive into any kind of yays or nays or whatever the hell has come along with that, we're just going to go ahead straight up. We'll give it before we talk about it, and then we'll give it after we talk about it, see if it's changed. But an overall rating, one out of five. Where is this season sitting at for you, Kelsey? Five being the best. Five being the best. <laughs> no, one being the best. We're going to do it. <laughs> I recently had to fill out something that was that way, and I spent a lot of time erasing. Oh, I do want to point this out, and I'll have to make sure that I cut this out as well, but I went back and watched the DFU where you did the whole rating 1 to 10, and I told you that you said it backwards. You totally didn't say it backwards, but I cut it out. So. <laughs> you dick! You dick! You dick! Oh, my God. You're a dick. <laughs> I was like, well, I can't be wrong about this. I was, I felt like I was so right. So I totally I got it out. I had. You, Damn literally, you. you literally said one to ten, and I was like, yes, one to ten. You're like, one being, I don't want to do this anymore, and ten being, I want the game. And I was like, wait, no, you said that wrong. It's one being, you don't want to do this anymore, and ten, you wanting the, you want the game. And you're all like, that's what I said. And I was like, you definitely did not. You're like, yes, I did. And I was like, I'm not gonna argue with you. I have it on recording. Well, I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> and I wondered that things. happened. Was when we talked about one to ten scales for like ten minutes. Oh so. shit! <laughs> uh, I was like, well, <laughs> I was debating whether I was going to tell you or not. Honestly, oh, that sounds like something you would do. That's totally jerk move. Oh my uh, god! To be fair, I cut out the entire conversation, tried. but yes. Oh. Ah. oh Anyways, man. that's great. Um, I would probably give this a five. I love this this season. Love okay. it. Five, five, Cody. Where are we sitting at? Um, I'm giving it a 4.5. Damn. All right. Pretty and high. I'll pretty say, high. Just for context, season one was a five and season two was a four. This is a 4.5. I Damn. like season one better. I like season two worse. I'm, I'm really surprised oh, that right. season two is a fucking 4.5 for you. Honestly. No, it's a four. Chris, oh, four. Sorry, my bad. My bad. My bad. It's like you don't don't worry. He'll it's just sometimes edit I don't. Out him being yeah, I, yeah, I do that all the time. It's great. All right, Bree. <laughs> that was great. Sorry. Uh, four point five. You can't just give it my rating. You have to <sighs> give it a four point four. That is legitimately <laughs> what I was going to rate it, Cody. Just because you go first. I want to be special. That means someone stealing your idea. Well, see, if Chris had made a one out of ten, it would have been a little bit easier. But like, if you give it, yeah, a four, true. Fucking Cody would have rated it a fucking 9.5 and you would have rated it a 9.5. Would have changed so much. No, I would have rated it a 9. All right? No, I would have rated it a 9. I would, yeah, well, exactly. No, you have to give it a 9. Anyways. See, you both did a 9, so fuck both of you. How about that? Oh, man. Anyways, so mine is a 4, but in context, my 1 is a 5 and my season 2 is like a 2. So I really oh. did not give a shit for season two yeah. at all. I thought it was there terrible. Was a lot of good stuff in season two. I thought it was terrible. I literally, okay. I I watched, deep. I watched episode or I watched season one with full attention on the show. I watched season two with it being in the background while I was doing other shit. Yeah, but Mama Steve. I I, I don't care, man. I don't care. You don't, I don't like care. Steve I love like Steve. Dead mother. To all these little kids. I mean, it was kind of nice. I did. It was, it was more of like the 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 sci-fi shit with Eleven and everything else that was going on with this band of fucking mischiefs that she had. Cra- I didn't give a fuck about any of that. I was like, this is the most bored I've ever been during this entire show. That was I so boring. I do not remember it being a two though. Like a two. It didn't have to be a two I mean, for you. You don't have to. He it was a two for me. Two. It didn't have to be a two for you. No, I believe in objective truth, Chris. You're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Oh man. But um, so the reason why this one did not get a five for me was, and by the way, I guess we should start out. But if you haven't noticed by the fucking title, spoilers ahead. Anyways, full spoiler review coming your way right now. Anyways, um, I didn't like the fact that basically Dustin was away from the group the entire time. I didn't, I didn't really care for that. I wanted to see all the kids back together. I, I liked how it kept Steve in the show, 
I didn't really care for the whole group that banded together. The chick I didn't really have a problem with. I didn't really care for the little kid that, that joined along afterwards. The 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 homie sister. I don't know his name. I don't know her name. I don't remember any of the kids' names at all besides Mike <laughs> and Dustin. That's pretty much it. Is it Lucas? Luke? I don't remember his I name. Think, I think it's Lucas. It's yeah. Lucas? Okay. Well, I definitely don't remember his sister's name because I could not care for that character at all. Like, I thought she was going to, like, crawl through the air duct and do what they need to do, and then she was going to be gone. Boy, was I fucking wrong. Yeah, I was so fucking it's, wrong. It's Claire, and then what was his sister's name, though? I don't know. I don't remember the sister's name. Oh, Erica, because America. Oh, God, and, that's oh, right. Oh, yeah. How did we forget that? I actually... Erica, like, her little ice cream scheme, like, was hilarious. I thought it was oh, so good. She was I mean, a little brat. I loved it. She was annoying, but in a good way. Like, she was yeah. supposed to be a frustrating little kid. And she nailed that. See, Cody, you and me are on the same wavelength. I like it. Let's I go. Know. Okay, so here's what I didn't like. Here's where the point five is for me. It's entirely oh in the fact that there are Russians, and they're just evil. It's just like, <laughs> hey, we need a villain. Why don't we make cartoon evil Russians? And I'm like, are we really going back to cartoon evil Russians? It's the no, 80s. It's, cartoon yeah. evil Russians. They didn't want to make it complicated, but I do agree. There was zero character development on the cartoon evil Russians. It was, was very cheesy. It was very cheesy. And actually, that Russian guy seemed like the Terminator to me. Yeah, yeah. He was... did. <laughs> they just like kept Terminator him in the face. And he kept yeah. not dying. I thought he was going to be naked and we were going to see his ass and his balls hanging. Well, you never saw the balls I on the Terminator. That part yes, of you the did. Terminator. Yes, you did. What? No, you definitely saw Arnold Schwarzenegger's dick and balls. I definitely think that you might have been watching the Pornhub edition of Terminator. No. Okay. I do not no, remember this in actual up. Terminator. Here's what Cody, happens. Cody, Cody, he Cody, beams Cody. Down. All right. And then he's <laughs> walking towards the motorcyclist. He is completely naked. And you get a full frontal view of him. He is in shadow, but if you look between his legs, you see Arnold Dick flapping back. And Dude, forth. no. Okay, that's the same shit when everybody got excited in Deadpool 1, whenever fucking he was in the nightgown and fucking Ajax picked him up and threw him across the room and he saw a shadow of Ryan Reynolds' dick and everybody's like, oh my god, I saw Ryan Reynolds. No, you didn't. Okay, you saw fucking silhouette dick. That's what you saw. You didn't see anything. Same thing with Arnold Schwartz. That didn't happen, dude. That didn't happen. Well, it did. Go back silhouette, silhouette, maybe. But that, we, we, I mean. Look, you see it bouncing on his thighs. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I saw well, a sock why, they had taped to his fucking leg, maybe. That's why I specifically said balls, not dick and balls. All I'm saying. Like, well, well, how do you see the balls without the dick and balls? Me. Balls have, they, they hang low. Me and my friend. Well, it depends. But me. You can tie him in a knot. Jesus Christ, nope. just stop your shit. Nope. Me and my friends have a saying, you which I think fits Arnold perfect here. Schwartz shogs. Anyways, me oh. and my friends here have a great saying, which I think fits perfect for this situation. And that is, dick picker didn't happen. That's all I'm saying. Okay, there's some really weird dick stuff picker that just popped up. I'm not going to say that anymore. <laughs> and that was the day Bree got a computer virus. <laughs> <laughs> the Terminator. Oh, uh, yeah, I agree though. I think the like Russians were really cliche. It was I think that's honestly I agree that's the reason why I would give it less of a thing. Also, they were very separated the whole time. I thought they did a really good job at making the story flow even with them separated. Now that is what yeah. Game of Thrones was lacking this last season was they didn't link the stories very well. They didn't have a good storyline. This still had a very good storyline and was separated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought I liked that the the separation between the characters to me made sense. I, I agree that it was like I kind of wanted them to get back together, and then when they finally did, it was like, yes, finally they're friends again. Um, but I kind of liked that they made like Mike and Eleven kind of suck and forget about their friends because that's like a that's thing. teenagers that one hundred and one. That yeah. happens. I don't know, teenagers. I've seen it happen in like. 20s <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah it's like you know the new way love relationships are change you new know? love mm -hmm. um so i thought that i'm glad that they didn't just make it like a little kid friendship story again and instead made it like a awkward dating show which i funnier to me i going off of that i feel that like 
they made Max just this unlikable fucking monkey wrench in the entire fucking show. I did Wait, not care Max for Max red, at all. Right? Yes. Yes. You're like the third person that said they hated Max. I, I didn't, didn't hate her. I just thought that she was just this unnecessary like negativity through the majority oh, of the show. I would like to speak to this. Please. So I think most of this hate is coming from the fact that she kind of helped Eleven play games with you yes. know the, the men's hearts but i would like to point out as someone who has been a human female teenager at some point that is 100 percent accurate <laughs> i'm not saying <laughs> it's not accurate and that happens and so seeing it i was like oh god yeah that's right that's why we grow out of that and stop doing that because it's right but, but 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 to be fair though he was lying to her so it was almost like a a good friend thing too at the same time all i'm saying is, is that i'm dating a girl and her dad kidnaps me throws me in a car and he's the fucking sheriff that could easily make me disappear i might not be a hundred percent truthful the next phone call that i have with her as well that's all i'm saying that's all i'm saying there are reasons to fear the situations that have happened <laughs> you could be truthful and then just say hey let's not tell you i'm dad. pretty sure they saw him fuck up some Demogorgons at some point with some kind of fucking weapons. There's a good chance. There's a difference for when the when the dad's just like, I own guns. And then there's a difference when you see this dad use these guns to put down things that literally create the fucking nightmares that wake you up at night. There's a difference. There's a little bit of a difference. Hop that literally looked like he was losing his fucking shit in the very yeah. beginning of the fucking show. He did. It was so great. Like, the just, like, when Mike's laughing in his face, and you just see him, like, slowly going crazy. Like, <laughs> oh, he's gonna kill this little kid. He's gonna shoot <laughs> this little kid in the face. But I loved yeah. how the next, like, after he'd broken and stuff like that, he showed back up and and told, Ooh. um, crap, Winona Ryder's character. Anyways, whoever can't remember her name, I'm Winona terrible names. Writer, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Writer. Told her like, I did it. It all went great. Today they're not spending any time together, and she absolutely believed that he gave him a speech and it all worked. Yep. <laughs> Although I will really say, I was I was completely okay with Hop dying. Actually, that's the reason why the show didn't like get like a three point five. I was completely okay with Hop dying. Oh, we just went straight into it. Yeah, I, I, I said that this is spoilers, that. but. I'll be in fair, he's not dead. Oh my fucking god. If he what? If he can what? No, hang on. I'm so if done. I'm so it. done with this Chris, already. How do you say something before uh, someone even finishes? I don't know how you know what there is. I had the same conversation with Joey last night, and Joey is the guy that if you don't physically see the person die on no. screen, they're not dead. So I literally was like, Did you finish season three? He goes, Yes. And I was like, Man, dude, what'd you think about Hop? Chris, and he's like, Chris. Nah, he's not dead, dude. He that is Joey. This is Cody. Doesn't that matter. is Joey. He's well, dead. Well, okay, dead. so let me break down the two things that make me okay with how they did. So, in that sequence, you see Winona Ryder looking at Hopper. She realizes she can kill him and save the world, and that she's going to have to do that, right? So then mm -hmm. what they show next is the portal leading to the Upside Down. Then they show Winona Ryder pull both the switches, and they show the Russians die. And then they show the wall again. And then they show Hopper vanished. And they never show Hopper getting hurt. Oh my so god. So he no went into the portal. Well, there's no reason for them to do that and remind the audience that there's a portal there in that sequence unless they were leaving that door open. Now, what I will say is if they decide not to make a season four, I thought th what sold this season for me was the last few minutes where you're getting the letter from Hopper. Because to me, and like other people have said this, but I think it's true. What makes a horror movie a good movie and not just a horror movie is when the movie would work without any of the horror element. And that story about this guy that can't talk to his daughter and then like her kind of growing apart from him, her trying to mature while he's trying to do something else and him never getting to have that conversation, but then her getting that letter at the end would work as an emotional resolution and did work as an emotional resolution, even without all the supernatural stuff. So that's why, to me, like, that scene was perfect, even if it wasn't a horror movie. But all the context with it made it even better. So 
they treated it like he's dead. If they make a season four, he's totally alive. Did you watch the post credit scene too? Yes, I did. I, yeah. I, I, I that's why like, I tried to post it in. American, you mean Hopper because he teleported to Russia. Yeah, I get it. Wait, I didn't watch it, so. Oh, Jesus. wait. What I even posted it in the review show channel. I know you did, but I didn't get a chance to watch it. Oh my god! It literally just shows Russians, and they're walking, and they see these jail cells, and they're all like, I, I think they said something about feeding time or some shit. I don't know if they even yeah. alluded to that. Yeah, and they said not the American. And then they said so not the American, so they opened the other door versus the one they were going to open. You never see who's in it, which obviously, like Cody said, it's definitely like a big like, oh, Hopper's probably in there. And then they open the door and grab some Russian prisoner out, and they go down this fucking ridiculously long fucking flight of stairs all the way to the bottom, yeah, throw him right? in this fucking... It, was, it had to be like a thousand floors. Throw him in this fucking <laughs> cage. I, you think I'm joking. I'm definitely not. They look down, and literally, it's just a dark abyss of stairs. Anyways, they get down there. There's this gigantic-ass cage. They throw him in the fucking cage, and then a fucking Demogorgon comes out from underneath a hole in the wall and fucking eats the guy. Showing that they caught one of them and are using it as a pet at the moment, and trying so to understand it. I have a couple of it. very significant issues. Uh, the the gigantic staircase in Russia and the gigantic elevator shaft underneath this mall. Like, no, no. The time it takes to just dig that damn shaft and support that shaft. They don't have time to do that in the time it takes to construct a mall. Kelsey, so are Kelsey. They constructing the mall? Just, you need to I understand. It. That made me very angry. I did not like that. Anything is possible. Anything is possible with the power of Mother Russia. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> no. They literally looked at this blank fucking ground. They're like, they're going to build a mall here. Let's get an elevator shaft. It's like, sir. We like, can't so we can't do this in this short amount of time. They're like, who let the American on this soil? Quick. From other Russia. And then bam, it was built within like five hours. Done. From start to completion. Yeah, no. Done. No. Chernobyl, <laughs> yeah. They just got a bunch of naked miners and just like <laughs> threw them all in there. Right here. Right here. <laughs> do it. Done. Ease. No fans. Dig it by hand. Get in there. Dicks around. I, they they could have made that elevator shaft so much shorter. And it would not have pulled people, like, it, it wouldn't have made a difference to the story, other than the people that are paying attention wouldn't have I like, mean, a there's no way you'd have an elevator shaft that long. If I'm looking like, up an elevator shaft, and I'm trying to climb up a cable, and it's like 2,000 stories, I know I'm going to die if I try. If it's 50s, 50 stories, I'm probably still going to die, but god damn it, I'm going to go for it. Like, yeah, right. that's happening. Well, that's I fucking happening. Is, at this point, Russia might as well just be called Hydra. Yes. Like, that's how they were treated in this. Yes, like, they were. Point. It was so Hydra-ish. Was not the peak of the Soviet Union. They had resources, yeah, to, like, buy an Indiana town and dig a hole straight down for five. Like, no. I it's, cannot tell you how bad. Hail Hydra. That's all they are. I cannot tell you how <laughs> bad I wanted that spot where, like, uh, the fucking bald eagle decided he was going to get underneath the floor and go to the other room to fucking fuck with the cables and like uh bald yeah, yeah bald eagle, bald eagle. and hop <laughs> hop and once again Winona Ryder decided they were going to stay back and I wanted a Russian to just bump in out of nowhere and Hawk to be like, this is for America and pulls out a Captain America shield and just goes fucking running. <laughs> I wanted that to happen so bad. I was like, oh my God, this feels no, like Hydra. You literally screamed at your TV. <laughs> Hell Hydra! I to have to dress up like Rambo at one point because they called him Fat Rambo. And that's the most accurate description I've ever heard of Hopper. That was pretty funny. <laughs> Fat Rambo! Like, yeah, Fat Rambo! That was pretty funny. <laughs> I love every fight with him where he's just getting the crap kicked out of him. And I'm like, you go, Fat Rambo! <laughs> he's getting his you ass do kicked. do it! <laughs> Constantly. Constantly. Um, what's, the, what's the chubby boy's name again? Dustin? The chubby boy? Dustin? Dustin? I don't think really, really Dustin. I don't, I don't, I don't really think he's that. I don't think he's that chubby. Cute chubby cheeks. I mean, he's got baby face, but it's not chubby. He's yeah. baby face. Okay. So. He part but... where he starts singing with his girlfriend. I was going to say that. that the there best is. Part. I am pretty sure across America, the best part of this whole fucking show was when they started singing it and then it flashed a hopper and the look on his face like, are you fucking. <laughs> kidding me <laughs> probably the best so shot good. out of the entire fucking it show was yes. so good every time the Hopper's song was very cute i loved i loved every moment of hopper being a parent 
Yes. Like when he's threatening Mike, and I'm just like, yes, pure dad right here. No, but you know what's cool about Dustin and singing that song though? He was a musical theater kid, so he yeah, actually he was. Sing. Yep. Oh. Mm-hmm. So, I like, mean, I actually like singing. I was like, yeah, awesome. He's a theater kid. That's just cool. so people know, moving forward, her name is Joyce. By the way, I went ahead and just pulled up the cast Joyce. list, so Thank that way we you. fucking God. know. I should have yeah. said so it is calling her Winona Ryder the entire time, Joyce. <laughs> Anyways, um, oh, my biggest bullshit moment of the entire show, and at first it was just one, and I felt bad about it because it didn't want to come off as sexist because it could definitely come off as sexist, but then it happened with Jonathan as well. I don't know where the fuck they thought that Nancy or Jonathan can pull this amazing fucking point turn in this car where they completely flip this entire station wagon around within a fucking fraction of a second going at least like 60 miles per hour. It's fucking bullshit. 100 percent bullshit nancy did it first whenever they pulled up to uh it wasn't the mall it was whenever they went into that fucking store whenever 11 had the, sh- the, the whenever they first went to go take 11 to get medical shit for a leg and she fucking oh, yeah, is yeah. driving straight hits the brake within a fucking fraction of a second flips the station wagon all the way around where it slides just right enough to where the right side where all the kids oh, are able to jump out onto the sidewalk within oh, a no. fraction of a second in a station wagon Never yes, would happen. Jonathan did it too. Never no. would happen. Ever. Chris, you have to understand. They're from Indiana. They spend their winters just trying to handbrake into parking spots. No, it's no. I, I absolutely disagree. <laughs> Is that an Indiana specific thing? I mean, that was a me specific thing, and I'm from Indiana, so yes. So obviously. <laughs> yeah. Matt said, Rambo's from Indiana. Would not happen ever it's the dumbest thing i ever saw in my fucking life i was like the moment she did it i was like this is bullshit this is there's no way she could fucking do that absolutely not and then jonathan did it and i was like this is bullshit there's no way he could fucking do that so wasn't there like a 50 foot tall spider monster and what you're complaining about is a car spinning in a circle yeah but see it's a science fiction show Whenever they try to add these different physics to real things that apply in actual reality, that's an uh, that's an issue for me because that is actually I mean, something that is real Kelsey and within our actual reality. Kelsey was complaining about the elevator and how far it had to drop. So yes, but I mean, she also doesn't understand the power of Mother Russia either. That's Kelsey's fault that's for being true. ignorant. I can't I can't help that. <laughs> yep. God, Kelsey, <laughs> stop just being like ignorant. Working on it. Like Indiana redneck driving. That's like, not in a fucking station wagon that's fucking heavy in the ass and heavy on the top. They would have flipped the fuck out of that, that car. If thing was rear wheel drive, it'd be perfect for that. Yeah, man. Right yeah. Real wheel drive, drive fucking station wagons in the fucking, like, what, 40s, 50s, 60s, whenever the fuck the show takes place? Yeah, okay. 80s? Whatever. 80s? Doesn't matter. I don't like, know. I actually not know what this show takes I place. don't fucking pay attention to none of that shit. Cody? All right, well. Fuck! You can't tell it's the 80s? You're from then. <laughs> I'm actually not. 91. 91. Oh, I thought you were a little bit older than me. Never mind. Nope. Just right on the edge of being relevant. Yep, exactly. Boom. Did it like five right years? Right on the edge of being relevant? Huh? So what, I had what year were you issue? born? 92. Yeah. I had a major issue when she ripped the Demogorgon's face apart and then they all ran out and they like they kept having this time between seeing the the fleshy monster thing that's coming at them and like getting the chance to squeak away and then getting a lot of time to like figure out what they were doing and plan before it showed back up and it seemed very it seemed bad to me like it yeah. shows up over the corner and it's looking at them and they're like <gasps> and they have plenty of time weird. to run inside and lock all the doors and everybody gets their guns and they load their guns and they put stuff in front of the windows and they all get all they have this big old moment and then they wait because it's coming for them and it was like it was like 50 feet away it would have been through the damn house like, <laughs> ugh, i didn't like that no, you're you're right because i forgot about that but now that i'm thinking about it i remember that sequence where you see what what's it called like the soul flare running yeah. towards them and they're like oh shoot and they run back in the house Mind and then flare. there's like a five minute scene of them like sliding furniture over and loading shotguns and getting yeah. axes and I'm like wasn't the wasn't he like right outside he's really big he moves quick man yeah or or in the hospital when the monster conveniently <laughs> waited until he broke through the door 
Wasn't yeah. that kind of that monster? That's a very, it's a very thoughtful monster, and I don't think the show acknowledged how thoughtful that monster was. I don't think they did either. It's kind of fucked was up, the, honestly. Was the like kind of pervy guy's name Billy? Is that what his name was? Max's brother. God, Billy. Uh talk to me about Billy. Do you feel like he was redeemed in the end? Uh, no. I mean, I feel like they oh. kind of wanted to do that, but he okay. was redeemed in that they were like, he's gonna stand in front of the monster. Now he's dead. Like, okay, he didn't have I mean, much of an arc. I you feel bad when he, he had to go through his emotional trauma memory. Like, yeah, was little... I don't know. That felt a little bolted on to me. It wasn't. No, bad. I actually, I actually liked it. I thought it was. It showed a deeper side to him. I I thought that was gonna be there. I just thought there was gonna be a little bit more. If that makes sense. I I like, I like how they did it. I will say this: I really enjoyed his character arc solely do for the fact I don't give a fuck about the redeeming aspect I didn't really care for the character to begin with I, I honestly could have been I think I would have been like perms and chewable mustaches <laughs> right mm. I think I would have been completely fine if both his character and Max were never introduced into the story I think I'd be completely okay oh, with that I like Max. I really I, I, I really don't think Max added anything to the story in my opinion whatsoever I was completely okay with the original cast from the first one I don't think she added anything and I definitely don't well, think Billy did either well, um, that's kind of the point, though, is that like that original group of four people can't just stay that group of four people for forever. You know, like new people are going to be introduced. One of those being Max, and that's that's fine and dandy. But she still was not. Man. They had to give the guys that are like they're they're at the edge where they're starting to get girlfriends. Like they had in season two, they had to introduce a girl. Like they had to. I don't think there was a way around it. You just didn't like the one they chose. Well, maybe I, I don't know. The they would have made her more useful. Maybe I would have liked her. The, I wish they'd finished. I wish they'd left it at season three. And if they didn't have that after the credit scene, I think they absolutely could have left it at season three, and it would have been great. There's, there's no way that they don't. Yeah, I know, and yeah, I'm, I'm actually really upset well. about that. You can't, and I, even even the cast that I at least that I've heard from, even the cast wanted to end after this season. They didn't. They didn't want a season four. <laughs> So, my, yeah. my thing is, as long as they do it well, there is a story worth telling. Um, but you also like it. It's a tricky thing deciding when to end a book or when right. to end any story because you want to end it with the audience wanting more, not less. So they left hooks in the story that could be another whole season. Eleven doesn't have powers. Eleven is living. Eleven is like emotionally maturing and starting to become interested in boys, and now can no longer see her boyfriend, and is instead living with her boyfriend's best friend. Like Nancy right. and Jonathan are going to start becoming adults and possibly parents. Steve doesn't have anything to do with his life. Like these are all good hooks, Dude, and also he's about to work at a mind. movie store. All right, he's he's set. He's set. <laughs> And oh, God, that was a, that great. was a pretty interesting scene. <laughs> you know that guy that runs the movie store? He's played a sad twenty year old for about twenty years. Mm. He yes. looks like he's fifty. Like <laughs> he does not look good anymore. And I'm like, you guys yeah. got to stop casting him as a vacant twenty year old. I wonder if he's, he's on this old. character list. Do you remember what his name is? I don't. No, no but he's played that exact character so many times, 10 different times yeah. minimum. Yeah. Like that's that, yep. he is absolutely typecast into that character. Yeah. Think of uh, Robin and Steve and their relationship. I liked Robin. At first, and then her, I and then like her being a lesbian. I liked all parts of her character. So, yeah. the only thing I didn't like, I thought that that conversation that they had in the bathroom was a really good representation of someone coming out to someone else. And I liked that the conversation didn't go perfect and wasn't super graceful. Right. So you kind of saw Steve mess up. Right. Like he wasn't just immediately supportive or immediately like, okay with it. You kind of saw him struggle with it for a minute. And yeah, I thought right. that was very real. Like yeah. it was, um, I'm glad they didn't just whitewash that over and him just be like, it's okay. I'm a modern man. There's nothing wrong with homosexuality. But I'm also glad they didn't just go full 80s where he would have been like, ew, gross, and just like run away. Yeah, so I like that you saw him struggle with thing. it like, yeah. and have to decide to be her friend. You know, like yeah. it took him a second. I thought that was really good. The only thing that bugged me about it was I don't feel like that was well set up. 
in a way that it could have been. Like... What would you have preferred to see? Well, okay, so that was supposed to be, like, a twist, right? Like, oh, we, you were assuming that we were setting Steve up with Robin. They're bickering like an old married couple. Then they end up together. And it's like, oh, the person I needed was right here all along, right? That's, like, the mm -hmm. classic story. And they yeah. wanted to subvert it. The issue is they didn't... They gave a lot of hints of romantic tension between Robin and Steve early in the show. What they didn't give was any hints of any romantic tension between Robin and anybody else besides Steve. Yeah. And they had opportunities to do that. So it was very much just told to you instead of ever being shown in a subtle way. It wasn't I bad. I can see it's, that. It's just like, if that scene hadn't happened, there would have been no way to guess. You could not have inferred that about her character. Which not saying you have to, but it just means that when you look back at it, it's like, well, they kind of just set something up and then went, never mind. Like as story writers, it feels sloppy. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I see your call to sloppiness, but I also wanted to call and I wanted to juxtapose these two things. When Can you um, use that word one more time? I swear juxtapose. to God. Juxtapose, oh my juxtapose, God. Juxtapose. I Someone love the kick word. her from the Skype. <laughs> No, keep me. I'm saying Who says that word? Holy God. Me. I use this in normal everyday life. Jesus Christ. Kelsey, if you not... want to get real, real uppity, I got in trouble for using the phrase diegetic the other day. Ooh. All right. Start using diegetic. What the I hell will... does that even mean? Diegetic means something in the story as opposed to something out of the story. So soundtrack is non, is non diegetic. Whereas, like, if there's a band playing in the background of a scene, the music would be diegetic. Anyways, go ahead, Kelsey. Juxtaposition. Like you, Cody. Oh my Jesus Christ. <laughs> they made a hint that Will may also be gay. Um, and they, they just said, well, it's not my fault you don't like girls kind of thing. And then everything got awkward. Yeah. And on. And right. one thing that I think is important is we can't assume someone's sexuality. And so the fact that they didn't set it up, I think actually was saying a lot about the fact that you, we all walk in assuming that what we saw between these two was sexual tension. We 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 made a narrative in our own heads because we went, oh, we think we know how this is going to go, and then we then the facts changed. And I we... would agree with you if the story wasn't written. If that was real life, and there was a guy that got along well with a coworker that was a woman, he could not just assume, oh, well, she's naturally attracted to me. You're very right. Um, he could assume that he. I was going to say a lot of guys do. I'd argue that's fairly <laughs> normal. Um, <laughs> now I think that having that conversation eventually, after like having some of the moments, would make sense. And I don't think was creepy. Like I don't think Steve was creepy at her. I don't um, think so. No. But the way, okay, so this has to do with like framing a story and what okay. people assume. So it's. I am making a point about narrative, not about social interactions. And that's okay. important, that's an important distinction to make. So if you see a scene in a movie and it's dark and stormy and there's lightning and ominous music playing, that is shorthand to tell you that you're in a scary situation. Mm -hmm. That setup, everything about it was like textbook, a setup for a romantic relationship between those two characters. They, so they you did feel like that they start on... the narrative and abandon it. Well, they did, they set it up on purpose so they could have the reverse. That okay. that's what I'm saying. Can and I, they did. Can I add set something quickly? Reverse. Sorry. Yeah, I think the I think the weird part about it is that she was reciprocating a little bit. It wasn't like it. It, it would have been different if it was just one sided. I think that's kind of where the weird part comes in. It's like she had signs going from her direction to him it felt like they had chemistry and again if that was real life and it was just she was talking to someone no you should not assume that any woman that smiles and talks to a guy wants to have sex with that guy that's a bad thing to assume but when it's written into a story and they write these scenes in this order with yeah like you said both characters kind of recipro reciprocating like more and more vulnerable moments and more and more respect between each other they yeah. were building one. Now, after they did that, die though. <laughs> well, that's true. 
after they did like, that we're the last person I may see. Let's just like be nice to each other and just yeah. like each other. Just, not like 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 um. Let us like fuck. You're, <laughs> like you're there's no one else, and so you just have a closeness to that person because they're yeah. the last person you may see. Yeah. Well, and that's that's that another thing, thing is like desiring human contact and like I don't want to say affection, but like respect or contact does not necessarily have to imply a desire for a sexual or romantic relationship right. so that was mm -hmm. also something i thought that the show did well is it doesn't feel like they grew apart after she like came out to him it just felt like it was like okay now the relationship's different but it's still important and we still like each other i was like that was yeah. good well they done. did do that part well Although I did want to bring something up because <laughs> I thought it was a really good scene. That thing where um, Mike said to Will, it's not my fault. Um, you don't like girls. I actually read that differently. I thought that was a jab at him because people, um, what did they say? I can't remember. It was brought up in the first show that um, people had like been derogatory towards Will because they said that he was gay. But it felt like it was like the like 80s you're gay you know just like as a generic negative mm -hmm. and the reason i thought that was so cruel is because that's something that he would have been sensitive about not because it was true but because at the time that was just generic negative thing that bullies mm -hmm. had said about him but never his friend you know what i mean oh like he wanted to say to be mean in a way not like he actually thought that type thing yeah, th yeah. that's the problem is he doesn't actually think that will's gay he was using that as like the same way that all the bullies were using it when they said it about will. that to me Maybe. Is why that was so harsh now you might be right and i might be misreading it but either way i thought that choice was smart for like the cruelest thing mike could have said to will at that moment and I, I was looking it up later because I was like, D is that what they were trying to get at? And um, the actor himself actually came out and said, it A, it doesn't matter whatever Will's sexuality is. B, it hasn't been canonically written in at all, so nobody knows. Yeah. And C, I hope it's a question that never gets answered. Like, he, he specifically said that. And so various yeah. people have, like, commented on it and they said, hey, whether he is or not, I want you to, like, I want everybody else to know that being gay in a small, like, Midwestern town, that's exactly, like, what you saw on screen is what I felt. And so he's portraying that image very well, whether he is gay or if he's just isolated from other people right now. Yeah. And I thought that was interesting. Well, and, I mean, the show does a lot to whitewash the 80s and have us forget, like, the bad stuff about the 80s. Yeah, but that was one of those things I'm actually kind of like the fact that everyone smoked I was fine with which I know there was like some backlash about yeah but as far as like making you understand the type of time that it was that is exactly how people talked in the 80s that would have been like a dig at someone even mm -hmm. if there was no sus suspect of them actually being like homosexual just calling someone gay oh yeah was it was an insult just that pretty insult. sure that was an insult when i was growing up the yeah. 90s and yeah, right? i still think i hear people say that <laughs> definitely you do you do it just would have been way more commonplace in the 80s it was a commonplace in the 90s yeah, yeah it's becoming less commonplace over time i yeah, would say when i hit 20 yeah when i i mean i think i was out of high school when people really started going like it's wrong to say gay yeah yeah well okay. and like in that context yeah like as a all as right like yeah a just, sorry just like a sub in for bad yeah mm -hmm. you know <clears throat> right but yeah i thought i thought that scene was like well set up with what they had done in the past because it had been yeah. brought up in the past but never by mike and never in that way <clears throat> I thought they did the score, the scory. They did the story very well, and then the hot topic buttons. I think they touched on really well. I think it flowed. The only, yeah, I think the only weird thing is just the Russians, and then <laughs> yeah, a lot of mother daughters, mother son relationships going on. Joy seemed a way more cougar. together this in this season than previous seasons. Um, I kind of liked again? that there was, like, that thing where he's, like, you've got to, like, stop living in the past of, like, like nothing's necessarily going to go wrong, you know? Oh, Joyce. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Joyce. Yeah. 
Yeah, wow, there really was just, like, almost an affair, though. Real casually, like, you know what I mean? Like, what? uh, gosh, what's Oh, her, what's yeah. Her? Yeah, between um, the... Mm -hmm. Oh, Billy and Mike's mom? Yeah, what's yeah. Mike's mom's name? Uh, I was Mike's literally mom. just Karen. looking Karen. at her Karen. name. Yep, Karen. Yeah, yeah, just very casually gonna throw that in. The... I do like how the husband came back for, like, two scenes... Just to remind you that if she did have sex with Billy, it would be an affair. Husband <laughs> hadn't actually done anything wrong other than exist and not be very interesting. <laughs> like, I think they kind of wanted to set it up where it's like, oh, it's a loveless marriage and her husband sucks. And it's like, can you really say a husband sucks if he's boring? Because that's really all he's done wrong is be very boring. <laughs> Well, I thought that was really interesting as they were touching on the reality of the fact that she married a really stable guy and he's just not exciting to her anymore. And that can be as devastating to a relationship as things like alcoholism and things that are really exciting and really horrible. Right. And so I, I thought that was valuable. And I also thought it was really valuable to watch her make the decision to maintain her family and and maintain her vows and then also have to live with the fact that that decision kind of it's the right one but it kind of sucks like he her husband <laughs> yeah. didn't suddenly get like she didn't come home to her husband throwing her like this nice like romantic night and taking a whole bunch of like effort for her she came back to her husband still being her husband still being boring i mean to be and... fair he didn't know <laughs> no yeah, he didn't right? know and that's that's the thing is sometimes when they tell these stories and there's like this that you're walking the edge of the affair like you get to see somebody rise to the occasion and and we didn't see that we we just saw her stay with a guy who doesn't realize that he needs to put in more effort right now Right. And live with that decision. And I, I just, I thought it was very real. It, it did it's the story like... for a lot of families, though, right? Yeah. yeah. Because when you're with someone for a long time, you have a kid, it, it can... Multiple kids. <laughs> un... It can get mundane, it can get normal, and then you kind of lose the spark and don't know how to reignite it. Yeah. Unless you talk about it, and she wasn't talking to him about it. Well, yeah, and I would say, like, Okay, I, I I don't know if I want to say that I thought it was well done. I thought it was, for being a minor plot point, I thought they did okay. Because that really wasn't what the show was about. Yeah. Um, I do like that they didn't make the husband just at fault. I, I thought that was a good decision to make. Because mm -hmm. I feel like that would be a typical decision to make. Is like, oh, her husband's a piece of garbage. And it's like, no, he's probably just sleepy, is what it is. You know, like, you just see him like passed out on a couch with, with a kid kids. on him yeah yeah, with kids. Like, yeah he's just sleepy yo you know it's like okay you know? <laughs> he doesn't have a perv stash but he's yeah. <laughs> tired and wearing tube socks not his fault. okay 90s kid calm down <laughs> <laughs> um, and you can understand where mike's mom is coming from no what's her name gosh i'm sorry karen karen, karen. you can understand where karen's coming from where it's like ugh gross tube stock dad i do not like him but then it's also like then a hot young boy with good ab muscles and yeah, it tan was like a dick and it's i like that billy was kind of gross and she kind of knew that wasn't right and also like you said wasn't trying to fix things with her husband she was just like gross dad and eh, skip <laughs> like yeah hot abs is way easier than gross dad so i mean uh, the funny thing is billy doesn't even know he got stood up so right he just turns into a monster Although, oh my gosh, I love how they just treated him like a wrecking ball. Just throw him through every wall. Just keep, like, <laughs> snapping his legs and throwing him through windows and hitting him with cars. He just bounces right back up like, I'm Frankenstein! <laughs> I honestly loved that because you were the whole time he was around, you knew that because of what he'd, like, because of the kind of the way he'd been possessed, for lack of a better way, flayed, I don't know, like he wasn't a normal man and yeah. that they portrayed beautifully you knew that was creepy as hell and actually when um jonathan and nancy were meeting with the boss and the boss was talking to them i remember noticing how sweaty the boss was and how yeah. uncomfortable it was i was like god why did they choose to shoot this this way <laughs> and then later when she was like he was sweaty it's the flare i'm like oh thank god i'm glad they showed that that way but it was real gnarly and did you know, <laughs> like that whole scene was off 
Like it yeah. was off by like 30 degrees. It was significant. And I think they were trying to just indicate to you like something's weird here and we need you to pay attention and we don't know a better way of doing it than this. Well, and I liked that whole storyline of like the town kind of becoming possessed. Like yeah. people are just becoming evil and it's like kind of creepy and sinister in the background. Although it does feel a little bit red scarish to me now in context. Where it's like, oh, you got to be careful. Communism spreads. Like, <laughs> I don't know if they did that on purpose, but it feels like it's about communism in a way that is a little bit weird. <laughs> I didn't think about that until you said it, and I'm not convinced that's what they were going for. I'm but not I either. Where you're drawing the lines. But yeah, it's just like a lot of it was like this little girl. It's like the great thing about capitalism is it's better than Russia. And then you see Russians like, all I want is American Slurpees. And I'm like, this is strange. <laughs> this is I was strange. sad when he got shot. But the moment he was walking like with that happy face and the big old arm full of things, I'm like, oh. Oh, oh yeah, you're living. super dead. You're yeah. super going to die. Well, as soon and the as moment... they made an emotional connection with him, like, look, it's a dead guy. Look, look at yeah. the dead guy. And when Joyce agreed to go on the date with Hopper, I'm like, one of you is going to die. And I actually I put think... my money on it being Joyce because I figured that would screw up the the kids more, but yeah, I knew it was wow, going to be one really. of them. Yeah. I, th I think it's safe to say that at this point, he traded in his white shirt for a red shirt, wouldn't you say, Kelsey? Since you now understand that saying. I hate you so much, Chris. <laughs> Wait, I thought I Chris was the one you. that didn't think that red yes, shirt that would be was. Did we joke, just Cody? bring up a Final Fantasy reference? No, oh, no, no. That, was Trek. Jesus that was Star Trek. Star Trek. Christ. The one person you definitely oh. wouldn't think would fuck that up. Good lord. I never heard of the red and white shirt thing, and I love Star Trek. So yeah. Oh I, my I don't, fucking I, god. I don't, I don't She just said that. that. She literally just fucking said that. I, I Bree, it was a joke about the fact that it's red and yellow shirts, or red and blue shirts, no, red and blue that. shirts, he and he was wearing a white shirt. The Russian was wearing a white shirt. That's why I said, man, he really put on that red shirt very quick. What? Oh, my God. No, I've lost track of this joke, too, now. I, I am blue actually... and I they have red, blue, and yellow shirts in Star it, Trek. And screwed it up. <laughs> the red shirts die. And the blue Red, shirts blue, stayed yellow. alive, right? That's how the, the thing yeah. was. Yes. Well, the no, Russian and the yellow shirts. The yeah. Russian was wearing a white shirt to the fair, and I said, "Man, he switched out that white shirt for a red shirt real quick, didn't he?" Because he fucking died. Yeah. You guys yeah. are losers. No, we we got the joke. No, we got it. It's just your explanation made it more confusing. It's okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but see, that's the problem, is that you have to dumb it down that much for Bree to get it. <laughs> don't what? That was Bree. Yeah, real don't insulting, put this on me. and I disagree. <laughs> I mean I don't, I don't know why you're putting this on me. This we can go back and watch that joke. We can oh, that joke was fucking literally <laughs> kindergarten <laughs> i switched two colors that's all i did two colors white and red that was it that was it we have a time lapse of like five minutes here of brie not understanding the joke and then me explaining it four times no and then her laughing your joke no one understood your joke no i mean i got it it's just your explanation I got it your, his explanation was the part that get, was the, crap. get the fuck out of here you both were like uh, no. I don't understand how my explanation was crap. It's two colors. It's literally two colors. What do you want from me? He wears a white fucking shirt. He put on a fucking red shirt. He died. Done. I love how Game over. that Chris is. That not only is he right, but that he's very clear and understandable. Fuck. Like he's yelling. <laughs> like, like he's like, if I yell louder, everyone will. Uh, no. Comments. Chris. Comments. Help me out, please. Fuck. I'm comment on this video. I'll fucking delete it. Fuck you, Cody. <laughs> hey, I have had the uh, powers. In Star Trek we'll The Next Generation, red shirts are command and frequently don't get killed, obviously. This oh <laughs> <sighs> channel's not good for my blood pressure. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up here. So if you enjoyed this content, make sure you like and subscribe. Also, turn on the notification. That way you get notified every time we upload another video. Let us know what your thoughts were on season three of Stranger Things. Do you want there to be a season four? Do you not want there to be a season four? And hit us up on the Twitters for a more direct form of communication and the Twitches if you want to watch us play some video games. But at the end of all this, I hope you guys have a great rest of the week.
and we will see you next time.